Hello everybody, so it's Sandy here from the Curtain Boutique. Today on the bench we have this lovely 100% linen uh, fabric with a lovely stripe. Uh, it's quite a thick fabric but it's ideal for Roman blinds. Okay, so I've turned um, over the sides um, to get my finished width and I'm just trimming the sides at the moment so that we have no more than five centimetres each side and I've pattern matched it so that we've got the stripe down each side on the face fabric so that the pattern is nice and balanced. Okay, so now we're doing the hem and I've turned up 10 centimetres and checked it all the way along so that we're nice and straight and then I pulled it back on itself and doubled up to form a double hem as you can see I'm positioning the bottom of the blind on the crease mark or nearest damn it and I'm now going to give that a really good press um, this fabric is very thick so it needs a really good press <laughs> So now that we have it tucked over to form the five centimetre double hem, I'm now just positioning the side there so that it is lying flat. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take in a little bit of the um, top part of the hem, as in the underside part, and making it slightly smaller than the actual front part that you see, tucking it behind so it's nice and flat, and I'm going to slip stitch that making sure the middle piece is tucked in to make it as neat and flat as possible. So I shall um, pin it all along the bottom um, and then we're ready to put the lining in. Okay, so now it's time to do the finished drop and I've positioned my tape measure in the correct position for the drop and I'm at the top end of the blind um, putting in the pins so that we can form the actual blind. Um, so obviously I'm starting from the right hand side of the blind. Uh, left, right hand side if you're looking at it and left hand side on the other side. Um, but anyway, I'm going to go along and in, at intervals and position the tape measure and then go back round and pin in place the actual drop. Usually I have someone helping me here, but she's not in today, so I'm on my own having to do this, but it's fine. I'm okay. I'm used to being on my own, so I'm completely fine doing this, so... It's a bit time consuming when you're on your own, but you know, it is what it is. So we just carry on pinning as we go. So once we have everything pinned in, we can now iron it um, ready for the Velcro. So I'm using a lovely thermal lining for this job. Um, it's fleecy on the inside and a cotton um, on the on the uh, main side. Uh, it's beautiful lining, it's great for Roman blinds. If you need any, please contact me and I'll be happy to supply you with some. Now I'm turning over two centimetres for the first edge. Um, they will start with the sides obviously um, and get the finished width of the blind, which I will make three centimetres less than the face fabric. So we've got one and a half turn-ins each side so that you see the fabric one and a half centimetres on the reverse of the blind, which looks really nice. So I'm just going along and um, turning over two centimetres. I don't tend to turn over too much because obviously once you put your rod pocket um, rods in, they won't sort of go to the end if you have too much bulky lining on each end. So I'm just going to give this a press and, and I will turn the blind round, uh, the lining round rather, and then get the finished width for this particular lining, which, as I said, is three centimetres less than the face. So I'm placing the tape measure on the straight edge, which I've brought to this side of the bench, um, so that we can get the finished width on the other side. And I will do that all the way along. Okay, so now we've um, 
t turned over the uh, finished wit um, and given it a press, I will go along and um, cut the um, side of the blind so that we've only got two centimetres um, showing on that side as well. So once we've done that, we will then be ready to um, start our rod pockets. So now that the bottom edge is nice and straight, I'm turning it up to um, form the first rod pocket. Um, and to do that, I will just bring it towards me a little bit because I can't reach. <laughs> I would bring it a little bit more, but my camera's in the way so that you can all see. So now I'm going to be marking my rod pocket, my measurements uh, from the edge of the lining, um, the bottom that is, um, to 16.2, which is my first rod pocket. And I will go along and do this all the way along. Then I will join up the little marks that I've made with my ruler. Um, you could use an invisible pen here really. I mean, you could use a faint pencil because the stitch line goes over it, but I would recommend really using something that disappears if you want it to look really professional and you don't want to see pencil marks on your work. Um, yeah, just go along getting it all nice and um, flat and straight and join all the um, little marks together to form one long pencil mark. So just before I pin, I'm just going along and checking that my rod pockets are a centimetre and a half, um, all the way along. So now we're going to pin along the actual pencil mark we made. Now I do this because I go over my pins with my machine, uh, which is probably a bit naughty, but my machine tends to be okay with it, so let um, me do it. But I probably wouldn't recommend it if I, if I was a beginner at least. I would put the pins along the line and take them out as you go um, with your machines because I don't want you breaking any needles and hurting yourselves. So pin them properly like, like along the line and then bring them, take them out as you go. Okay, so I'm working on a domestic machine to do this because it's just linings, it's not anything heavy. Um, if I'm doing pinch pleats, I'll probably always work um, on my industrial machine. Now I'm going to position the needle in just about a centimetre and then put the press foot down. And then I'm going to go back just a little bit And then I'm going to just go forward. Now, what I'm doing is I'm sewing exactly on the line that I've made with the pencil. And I'm going over my pins because it doesn't seem to bother this machine, but obviously take them out if you need to. Pins just hold it all in place and just make sure we get it accurate. So. space and then cut. So obviously my machine cuts the end so I don't have to worry about that. So that's really how we're going to do all of them. Um, so I'll show you how to do the next one in terms of the measure part. Okay so um, once you've got your lining, uh, you've done your first rod pocket um, and you'll, you pull the rod pocket sort of sort of out out to get it really nice and stretched and then you give it a good press because obviously it's got to be 
really flat so you get your accurate measurement so make sure you do that so when you press that make sure your sides are both together that's very important and then i will usually start from the middle but work your way out and position the tape measure on the end of the lining where you did before and you put in your next um, measurement which is 43.9 so I'm going all the way along, 43.9. And once you've done that, you'll obviously do the same as you did before, where you'll just join up with chalk or with invisible pen. And then you just go along and mark that out. Once you've done that, make sure you come back on yourself with the one and a half centimetres. So you've sort of got your, make sure it's all lined at the side, both sides, lovely. And then give, uh, put your pins in, ready to sew this next one. You don't have to put them in perpendicular, you can put them in in line with the actual mark like this and then as you go, or if you're going that way with the machine obviously, put them in this way so that as you're going along you can just take them out. So you can do that if you like as well. I just like to put them in perpendicular because I go straight over them and hold it all in place. Okay, let's sew this one. Right, so we're on the final rod pocket. And this one is 68.4, so we're gonna, I'm gonna use um, a, a larger yardstick <laughs> so that we can reach. So, 68.4, yes, just double checking. <laughs> 68.4 is there. I'm just gonna do three on here because I've got this large yardstick. Um, 68. And again on the end. Okay, then join those together. Exactly how we did before. Just that middle one a little bit. Pull it down to one and a half centimetres again, making it even all the way along. So I'm now going to put my pins in here. I mean, it is a bit time consuming doing the linings. In fact, there's a lot of work in a Roman blind that people don't realise. Um, but doing it, doing this bit right is very important because obviously this is the, the main part of the blind. I mean, I know the fabric on the outside is what you see, but this is what makes the blind work and pleat how you want it to pleat. So this bit has to be 100% right. Okay, so we're now going to sew this and I'll come back to you in a minute. Okay, so I've laid the uh, blind back on the bench and the lining is all made. I've given it a really good press so that all the rod pockets are nice and flat. And what I tend to do is fold your lining in half like this. So you've got like, that's the middle. Snip a very tiny piece of the corner and that will tell you your, that will give you your center piece. So you know your blind is 105, so 50, two and a half is the center part of this blind so i'm going to stick a pin right there basically it's in the middle of that stripe which makes sense so you know you're nice and straight when you're right in the middle of the stripe in the middle <laughs> okay so then you position the lining 
so that your piece in the middle is right at the bottom with your pin. So I'm just going to give that, I'm just going to press pin that in now. It's not staying there, it's just, just so that I can get all this lining positioned right so that we've got, you know, the right amount of face fabric as showing on the reverse as the other side. So I'm just going to give it a little bit of, I'm just going to, um, just going to measure it just to see. That's a centimetre and that is a centimetre. So I just want to make sure it's that all the way along. I'm going to get my clamps, <laughs> scary clamps, which will just hold the bottom of the lining, bottom of the lining and the hem, just while I position the lining properly along the sides. So we get a nice straight edge and, you know, you'll get this right amount showing each side. Okay, so I'm going to go around the bench and to position the bit at the top. So I'm just going to pull it towards me. I'm not going to stretch it. I'm just going to pull it very gently and just eyeball the sides which I can see look great. And the same with this one. Again, looks lovely. So then I'm going to just do a crease line at the top there and I shall probably have to cut this, this piece off which will sit under the, the top where the Velcro goes. Okay, so that's nice and straight. And now I'm going to pin the sides along here. Just adjusting it slightly there. So now what I'm going to do first, because I've got to lock this in, I'm going to be locking this one in first, this, this rug pocket. Then I'm going to lock this one in. Then I'm going to go around the other side and lock that one in from that end. So what I need to do is pin from here to here and from here to here. Because I don't want the blind, the lining to move now. So once that's pinned in, that is determining now where it's sitting. So when I p lock in this channel, I will flip the lining over so that I can get under here and lock that in. Then I'll pin it down to there. Well, I'll show you, I'll show you how I do it. So I'm just gonna set that clamp up so I can get, get over there. <laughs> so that is pinned nicely there. That's all going to be hand sewn. All these pin marks are where I'm going to be hand sewing the blind. So I'm going to pin it there. Pin it there. And there. Right near the rough pocket. Take my clamps off. Flip this up and over so that you've got the underside showing. And then you've got these bits here under the lining. Make sure it's pulled right to here. So you can see this under bit here, underside of the rod pocket here. And that's where I'm gonna do my stitching and locking in. So what I need to do now is work out where I'm gonna do my locking in. So the first locking in stitch is gonna be 10 centimeters in from each end. So I'm going to mark the 10 centimetres, which is there, with a pin. Then I'm going to mark the other one with a pin. And then I'm going to measure. So really, because it's 105 and a half wide, it's now going to be 95 and a half wide. But I'm just going to double check. Not 95 and a half, 85 and a half, sorry. So 85 and a half, which is absolutely bang spot on. So to know how many rod, how many rings I'm going to do, I'm just going to um, divide it by, how, you know, one or two, whatever, whatever it is. But now I don't like to do my um, my rings and my locking in stitches any more than 38 centimetres wide. Um, the sort of average 
gap is about 38 um and i always try and stick to that really because you, you you need the strength of the locking in stitch where each internal barrel is we need a um obviously locking in stitch to give it the strength for when it's pulling the blind up and down so um i'm going to go with obviously the first one but i'm now i think that obviously going half is too wide so i'm going to do um times uh, divided by three so i'm going to get my calculator and i do 85 and a half divided by three and that will give me 285, sorry, not 285, 28.5. Now that is rather on the small side, but I'd rather go small than, than too big. So 28.5 is where I'm gonna put this first one. I'll just use a smaller. So what I'll do is I'll go from this end. Yeah, you can see, I need my glasses. I need my glasses. Can't see anything now without my glasses. Right, 28.5 is there. And then I'm going to go from there and do 28.5 from there. And then the one in the middle should be 28.5. And it is absolutely bang spot on. Right, so now I'm going to get my, my needle and cotton. Now I'm using a really nice strong cotton especially with this fabric, because it's quite, you know, it's quite thick. So I'm going to use enough cotton to reach from each end. So I'll just take that out and that's enough there. Thread your needle. And then knot it at the bottom. Right, so your first um, lock and in stitch, go into the lining first, exactly where the pin is, and then go in again. So you lock, you sort of, you're sort of casting on, but you've got a nice strong start. So you've got, you're not there, and you're, you, so it's nice and strong. Then take a few fibres of the fabric, not too many, because you don't want to really see too much going on on the other side. And then do about two or three stitches back into the lining. And this, this is what will really hold everything in place. And then you can take your pin out. And then go to the next one. Into the lining first. And then go into your fab few, few fibres. And then three into the lining. Take very small stitches. Now, when you come to put your rings in, you'll see these little stitches in your lining. So you'll sort of know where you've got to put your rings. So into the lining again, a few fibers. Quite, it's quite strong, this, this fabric. Very good price as well so if anybody wants any let me know because it's a very good value for money i think okay so that's yeah three there and then we do the last one into the lining a little bit of face so like, i'll show you what i'm doing so you can see that I'm not you're not seeing anything on this side it's literally I mean this is good fabric so you know it's brilliant for doing Roman blinds you don't see any marks you don't it's just it goes where you want it to go yes it is thick so when you put your velcro in you know you, you it is quite you know it is quite thick right okay that's the last one and then I'm going to do a little knot as I finish it will knot her through the cotton like that. And that is it. Right, so I should be using a tiny little pair of scissors, Sandy, not a great big, huge cutting pair. <laughs> right, so that's that bit done. Now we're going to bring the lining down 
nice and gently towards you. Any little bits of fluff or anything <laughs> stuck on the lining, take that off. We don't want to see it on the other side. Um, and then pull this down. Now, be very mindful as you go down to keep your sides nice and straight. So what I'll do is I'll pin that in. Now that I've locked that one in, this one now can be pinned in. Okay, right, then we go the other side and pin that in. And again, nice and straight. I mean, obviously, because that started off straight, this one's not going straight, so. Okay, so then pull this up, because this one is now going to be locked in. So again, just make sure you've got it literally like that, so you're picking up this little bottom bit here. So again, let's get your ruler, 10 centimetres each side. your 10 on the end there and then stick your pin there right and then it's 28.5 so I'm just going to stick my ruler there and put your pin in there where it says 28.5 now you have to have it exactly how you do it so if you do it the same let's do it the same way that you did this one so that you know it's all going to be exact and in line with each other because there's nothing worse than having your rings all skew if you want them all straight in line with each other for the barrel to collect your cord and you don't want it being wonky we don't want wonky wonky cord right okay let's get some more cotton i've got this lovely strong cotton in here it's a lot stronger than the, my glutamin thread and it's very good. Right, where have I put my needle? Okay, where's my needle, guys? Who's stolen it? Is it under here? No. Okay, here we are, over here. Me and my colleague are always accusing each other of stealing our, each other's needles. It's very funny. Sorry, got a bit of my hair in the way of the camera there. Right. Same thing again. Now, I won't record this next bit. I'll just do this and then I'll come back to you when I've, when I'm doing the next one. So you can sort of see how I do that one. So I'll leave it here for now and I'll come back to you in a second. Okay, so I've done the bottom um, rod pocket. Now I'm ready to um, put my lining into the hem of the blind. So I'm going to take the lining right down. Now I was going to double up my lining, um, as in what I usually do with, with most fabrics is take the lining right down to the bottom of the actual, bottom of the actual fabric and then have a double fabric and lining hem all rolled into one. But because this is so thick, I kind of don't want to do that now. So I've decided to keep it as it is. So I'm going to uh, fold the, bring the lining right to the bottom, fold this up, making sure that's right in. Now you can actually pin your sides as well at the bottom. Keep that from moving. Um, So keep that there for now. Actually, don't put that there because that will get in the way of that one. So tuck that in. Oh, this lining is a bit temperamental. It sort of moves. Okay, let's just pull that, put it right down and turn that under. And pull it towards you like that so you've got a nice, you don't have any puckering on your lining. And then pin your hem in. 
and then do the same here just don't push the lining along with your hand like this a you could hang you could hurt your hand on a pin or whatever but um it will just stretch it always keep it like coming this way towards you to stretch it towards you rather than across because that's where you get all problems with lining and then it's it's all puckered and you can't get it straight so i've done this put it towards you put your pin in and then go across and do it all the way along so here i'm going to put a pin in here at the end. Okay, and then turn your lining up and pop a pin in there. I'm not going to pin this thick bit at the end because it's just too thick. I will just sew that and hold it in place with my hand. Okay, so that bit's all done. So we're now ready to sew here. I sew all the way down to there first. Then I come up and I start there and then I'll leave these open to put all the rod pockets and the doweling and stuff like the bottom bar, the rod pockets open and then come all the way along here. I'll close this end here by tucking that under and getting a really nice sort of look like that, making sure that's tucked in there. I'll have to use quite strong cotton because it's very, again, it's, you know, this fabric is so thick and then I'll sew it all the way up to there. And now I'm going to come around and do the top. So I'll show you how that's done. Right, so now we're going to do the top part of the blind. So first of all, we're going to fold this back so that we can lock in the very top rod pocket. Taking all your bits out. I don't know where all these bits have come from. Um, okay, so ready to do our sewing and first of all we've got a pin so we've got the 10 at the end again Twenty-eight point five. on the other side Okay, and I always start from left to right. Don't ask me why, but I just do. I always have. So I go in, pick up the first one. Basically get that nice and secure. And then pick up a bit of fabric. Again, very tiny piece back into the lining then go to the next one And then the final one. It's very hard to do this with your, with you guys in the way. <laughs> but it's important you see, so I'll just be extra slow on this bit because it's a little bit tricky to do it at this angle. But I can manage. Oh, just make myself a little bit short on this piece of cotton. So I'm just going to thread that back up again because I need to do a few more stitches to finish it off. Oops, what happened there? There you go. Two more, try not to un undo the cotton again from the needle. Okay, one more, and then put a little knot in there. There we go, that'll hold that, brilliant. So that is done there. 
Let's just snip that with my little tiny scissors. Right, take out the pins for the top that you've put in. Obviously, this is all pressed nicely, so you've got your crease line for your finished drop, and that, that is not going anywhere, that crease line. Honestly, it's like there for, it's there for good. <laughs> so I'm now gonna bring my lining right up to the top. Now, I sometimes I c catch the lining into the top with some blinds, depending on how thin the fabric is. But with this one, I'm not gonna do that because we're thick enough as it is. So we can't really be having any extra added into the top because it will just make it too thick. So let's just make sure we've got the same amount each side and then fold that back. And I'm going to get my cutting scissors. Okay, this is going to be a bit tricky. So let me just put a crease line in there. And then I'll just I'll just cut that bit on the crease line. Okay. So that'll sit there nicely. So I've cut that. It's a bit wonky, isn't it? Oh well, it's not going to be seen. Okay, so now I'm going to pull the line towards me and make sure it's just slightly past the crease line. Basically, these scissors need a sharpening pronto because they are not cutting brilliantly. Uh, these are supposed to be my sharper scissors, so this isn't good, is it, guys? See, even someone who does it all the time moans about her scissors not being sharp enough. Okay, so that will fold down like this, and your 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 buckram, your, sorry, your buckram, your velcro is going to go here, along here, and then I'm going to obviously this is all skew if. I'm not going to use the other word I usually use. <laughs> So I'm going to eyeball it, but by all means, you know, don't if you're a beginner. Just measure from here to here and then do, the, do it all along. Make a line, cut along the line. But I'm basically going to just guess. Not guess, but I just know. I know how to... I'm just going to really straighten it up. That's basically what I'm doing. Because I'm going to turn it under and slip stitch it. Because what, what will happen if I stick it, if I just cut it under the Velcro, I, it, it just will look naff. So I'm going to turn it under, turn it like in on itself, making a little hem. And I'm going to, you see what I'm doing in this corner? I'm going to tuck that under so that when we do that, actually, no, I don't think I'm going to do that. Um, I think I'm going to tuck it like that. Yeah, I think I'm tucking it like that. Sorry, guys. I'm just, I'm just thinking what I'm talking to, really. Okay, let's just pin this in because this is looking a bit. and it's not straight at the top. We need a little bit more lining to come out. Okay, so that's all nicely put in there. This will tuck under, but I'm gonna put the Velcro in first and then slip stitch this along because the Velcro is not gonna come down to here. It's just gonna be there. So, I mean, it might catch that bit there, but I'm still gonna slip stitch it because it won't look right if I don't slip stitch it, but I'm going to basically pin this in all the way along here, making sure we've got the same amount. Now you could use a ruler, but I'm eyeballing it because that's how I roll. 
but just make sure you have the same amount going all the way down. We have a few little crumbs hanging out of our lining. This is where you have to start doing all your neating and you know cutting away little tails of cotton and making everything look really lovely. So okay that that's there. does fray quite a bit this fabric but it is so nice to wear with I mean it's thick and it's okay in fact it's not brilliant to wear with I mean I'm saying it's nice to wear with but it's nice in some ways and not in others it goes where you want it to go which is nice but it's thick so that's kind of where I'm at with it <laughs> and it looks lovely it smells like a sack like a you know like a sack that sack material when you iron it, it smells like that. It's weird. Okay. Right, so that's my top one ready. So I'm gonna put my Velcro on first. Um, first of all, I'm gonna sew all the way around. Um, I might even slip stitch this as well while I'm at it. And then I'll put the Velcro on next and then obviously I'll be putting all the dowlings and the rod pockets in sorry the rod pockets and the bottom bar in um, and then that'll be more or less it apart from the rings so we're nearly there guys so this is how we are so now we're going to do our sewing um, I'll start off with the tricky part here and kind of show you how I do that and then um, obviously you'll you've probably seen me sew in loads of videos but I can I can certainly do some sewing on this blind to show you how how I would do it but you you know you can do whatever stitch you like as long as it's neat right so let's get some cotton on the needle and I'm using this strong cotton still because this fabric is very very thick and strong so I don't want my stitching coming apart so so what I'm going to do here I'm going to I'll take that bit undone I'm going to cut some of this away so I'll try and get around the right angle to do it I'm just going to cut like a little sort of like rectangle I'm not going to go too far near the edge because obviously that's you know you, you're going to see that but i'm taking away that because it's quite bulky so by doing that we're left with with that now when you get to the bit past the um past the piece that you see tuck it in slightly to the left so that you've got say you've got less of the stripe showing do you know what i mean where you just have a little bit less then you tuck that in and then you'll be left with that piece, that side, sitting underneath where you should be. I mean, this fabric is very frayable. It's a good word, isn't it? Frayable. So I've sort of got it nice and flat. So while I've got it nice and flat, I'm going to hold it for dear life. <laughs> I'm going to stick my needle right at the very end, the bottom of the blind, and position it in a little bit. A little bit in so your knot disappears inside if you've made a nice big thick knot that's nice and strong and then come out you can see what I'm doing come out to the very bottom at the side like that there okay that's quite thick so and I bet you're all going why don't you wear a thimble I just can't get on with thimbles never have been able to right I'm just going to go across a little bit picking up a few little bits like this okay and then I'm going to pick this side bit up and take a very tiny amount like that pull my needle out I'm still holding on to this oh don't say I've got a knot bloody hate knots don't you why do you get knots and this cotton never knots okay right so that's through go through the other side like like that i'm just looking at the camera so i can tell that you can see the right angle 
go through this one again just very very small amount you don't want them too far apart pull quite tight so that you can get a good fixing <laughs> good fixing sounds like i'm fitting the line doesn't it and then pull it through pull it through this channel tiny bit again sorry my hand keeps getting in the way look at this lovely brace that my daughter gave me yesterday it's so sweet and she look at it, isn't it pretty? I love it, love the colour. Okay, ow, 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 I think I've just pricked myself. Right, so you then go back in again. So we're getting there. It's getting a bit trickier now because we're getting to that very bulky bit. So really pull it through and then another bit. I mean it is a bit time consuming when you're doing these but if you do it properly guys oh, it just looks so lovely and nicely made you know. It makes a difference. So go through there. I think we're at the end now more or less. Go to the corner press that down like that so you've got that now now I'm going to do the bit where you go around the corner oh, it's come away a bit so I'm just gonna go into this bit here into the actual fabric make sure you don't come through the other side which I haven't oops sorry guys position the camera back again. Sorry about that. Okay. I'm not going to edit that out because, you know, it's real life. Okay, so now we're going to pick up some of the lining and go through again, doing the same thing where we're picking it up and we're sewing it along so basically we're going under the lining just a little bit and then picking up the hem right on the end again under the lining picking up the hem so this side is all locked in what I'll do now is I'll go all the way around the blind around the top um, sorry around the bottom back up here again and then I'll put the Velcro on and then we'll go from there. But I'll um, I'll get this all sewn. Um, but basically it's the same thing all the way around. I'm going under. I'll, I'll show you what I do when I get to the sides. But I'll just do this, um, this top bit quickly and then I'll come back to you. Okay, so I've done the bottom, sewn the bottom all along here. I've left this tail to to sew this once I've got the down, the bottom bar in. So I'm going to now um, sew this bit here. Now this is what I mean about the fab, the lining stretching. It's a bit of a pain, but you know, it is what it is. So I'm going to go under here. I've got a knot in the fabric, so the knot will hide into the, the lining. And then I'm going to come out again here Look at the very end on the crease. Just move that out of the way so it doesn't tangle up. And then I'm going to go into the face, through the face without going through to this side. So through the face, pick up the lining on the very edge and pull. That is your that is your stitch that you need to sew the blind keep your stitches about just just over half a centimeter get them nice and small and then it always looks nice and neat then and just go along 
the under the fabric into the edge of the lining and just do that all the way up now i'm going to keep these rod pocket um channels open at this end as well so that when i put all the hardware in i'll have this edge facing that's the uh, that side of the bench that side so that i can thread everything through and then i will close it once they're all in so i'll just carry on sewing this all the way around the whole blind and then i'll come back to you when i put the velcro on okay so i'm now going to be putting the um velcro on on the top I've slip stitched the top to make a nice little banding just that looks attractive and I'm going to position the velcro so that it's at the end here but it's literally like about half a centimeter in from the end because the track always has a little lip at the top before the, buck, the velcro starts so I always drop the velcro just very slightly so I'm going to position that in onto my into my machine so I'm now positioning everything straight um, before I start sewing. Do excuse the flickering guys, I hope we can get rid of that in a minute. So I've come to the end and I'm now going to trim this off. Okay, so um, I'm putting the dowels in, so I've cut them to the size using these sort of plier things and they're little fiberglass rods which I can provide if you want any. Um, I can also provide tracks and bottom, bottom bars and that kind of thing. This is the bottom bar. It's quite heavy and it will give weight to the bottom of the blind. So just with your finger just press down on the end of the, just move that a bit nearer so you can see, press down on the end of there making like a little circle and then put your rod in, turn it a bit if it's not going in and then just thread it all the way to the end and it should go right in and then I will put a little stitch, a couple of little stitches in there to hold that in place so it doesn't come out. So I've already put these ones in. So I'm going to do the bottom bar. So I'm going to take the bottom bar so that it's about a centimetre from the end, well a centimetre and a half from the end and the centimetre and a half from this end. So um, now we're going to be putting the putting the downing bottom bar rather into the bottom of the blind. So we go in to this gap here, all the way to the end, and that's leaving enough room to close here. So we're going to close here now, close here all the way up, and then we'll start. The rings right guys we're on the home run we are now doing the rings so we have to put a ring just next to each um, locking in stitch that we've made um, so we're going to be obviously doing four on each rod pocket um, going across um, 28.5 as we'd previously done our locking in stitches so we start obviously putting our rings in um, as you can see I'm literally doing a couple of stitches to start it off and then obviously putting the ring in place doing three stitches into the ring and then I will go round the ring about three or four times and then um, do a final three stitches back in and out. And I shall do that all the way along uh, for each um, looking in stitch and snip off the cotton. Now make sure you use a very strong cotton again because the rings are very important. You don't want them to come undone. So obviously I'm going to the next one and I'll just keep working my way along. Um, once the rings are done, we will then be ready to um, face up the uh, blind with the track. And then our cord cartridges will then um, thread through the rings um, and be connected with a little um, 
clip orb at the bottom. I'll show you what a clip orb is in a second. But basically we'll be putting it all together and then once it's on the track, it's ready to go. So I shall show you that in the next stage. Okay, so we, now I've had to give the other blind to the customer because she couldn't wait and I haven't been able to film at this part of the tutorial. So I'm doing it with another blind, which is very pretty. Um, and it's, this one's only got two um, rod pockets, uh, not two rod pockets, two actual um, lock-in stitches where you've got your ring adjacent to the lock-in stitch. So the lock-in stitch will be there and then your ring is there. So your cord is coming from the little barrels which are here in the track. This is your side winder <coughs> which operates the blind and <coughs> excuse me. Um, so what we're going to do is these cords come out of the uh, barrels. So in this case we've got two barrels that run um, along, well, we've positioned them to pick up the rings, which is where the locking in stitches are. So it all has to be very straight. So let's move the side winder out of the way. And we put the first one through the ring, first ring, and then we put it through the second ring, and then we put it through the third ring. Now I have cut this this cord. Usually they're a lot longer, and you have to cut them down. Um, and then obviously this one's already done. I've already threaded that through. So what I'll show you is at the top, the blind is put on the track with the Velcro that we've put on. And we've slip stitched along there. So basically we put the we've got our track like this, and we put our Velcro in line with the top of the track. Now, can you see that little lip that I was talking about here, where we position the Velcro about half a centimeter down? That's because of that little lip. So we put the, we marry up the two together, making sure it's really straight. Okay, and that's that. So we've done this bit here. So I'm just going to pull the blind sort of this way so you can see what I'm doing here. So that's your final um, your final ring. And we've got these little orb clips, which is what I was talking about. Now, I call them orbs because they're like little round things that look like orbs. <laughs> and they clip by pressing that down. Can you see that little release thing in the middle? So when you press that down, you're effectively making a little hole for the cord to go through. So if you try putting the cord through it like that, it wouldn't work. But when you squeeze it together, you can put your cord through the little hole, which is here. It's a bit difficult to do it on camera, but so you've got your cord through and then you press it through like that. And then you flatten it all out. Now I'll go around this other side of the bench to show you what I'll do here. So I've got these, the cords running like this, and I clip it just up to the ring. So it's just not too tight. This one's come undone. I'll just pull that. And then clip this one in. This one's slightly different, but it still does the same thing. Sometimes they're a bit tricky, but you have to make sure you cut the cord so that it's, there's no fraying bits that get stuck in the orb. So that's all done. And that is your blind finished. So all you've got to do now is, I'm just gonna position the camera so you can see my really messy room. <laughs> and I will show you how this works. So your blind will look like that, where you've got the lovely pleat showing. Okay, 
Now at the top of the blind, you have these clips that will go in here um, that will be fixed to the wall. And that's how that will be attached, the little swivel clips. And there's your blind. Obviously this isn't the one we made, but it's the one I've made recently. <laughs> Okay, so the blinds are fitted into this beautiful property that you're seeing now um, and the client was very happy with them. Thanks for joining me today with the Sew Along with Sandy. <laughs> uh, actually, that's quite catching, isn't it? Sew Along with Sandy, I might call it that. <laughs> but anyway, it's been lovely to have you join me and I will see you again soon.